Hello and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. My name is Jeff Shaw and I get pulled in here sometimes to host these shows, especially when they have to do with biking because I'm a biker myself, a bicyclist, and I'm excited today especially because we have a very special guest who is a, a uh, very much a bike advocate. Uh, welcome Maria. This is Maria Contreras Tabut and uh, Anyway, thank you for coming in today and talking all about uh, what your work's been going, what work you've been doing in the Davison Woodland, the Yolo County, and beyond. Um, so, uh, I, I just want to start talking a little bit, finding out about what uh, some of your background before we talk about uh, what work you're doing. And I just found out that you actually were born and raised in Davis. Is that what you well, said? Well, I got here at about age three, so I do okay. consider it a hometown. Though some people may still consider me a foreigner. Yes, <laughs> right. There's certain people. If you're not born in Davis, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't count. So I, you, um, you know, you're a bicycle. You call yourself a bicycle advocate. I would hope, judging yes. by all the work that you're doing. Uh, and how did this come about? As far as uh, your passion for bicycling, I know, sort of growing up in Davis, it's sort of like you said in your DNA. Uh, you know, it's something that you're just used to doing. Did you bike all when you were growing up, or? Well, you know, when I went to elementary school, there wasn't yes. there wasn't uh, hail like there was today. But um, really, most kids got to school on their own or groups of friends, and parents weren't driving them there. Right. I, I don't even know if walking there was something that parents did. Kids seemed to go with other kids. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoyed that sense of independence and, and just feeling capable that I could get myself to school. Yes. So I think very early on that was there, probably starting at maybe age eight. I think that's the same with me as uh, getting to school and I'd ride my bike. I didn't grow up in Davis, but I would ride my bike. And uh, before that, I would we would take the bus, but it was always sort of an independent uh, you know, time between uh, mm. the parents and going to school where, yeah, you were on your own getting to school. Yeah, so. independence, self-motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we worry that maybe kids are getting out of a high school and they don't have a sense of self-motivation, and yet we don't give kids the opportunity to do it. And transportation is an everyday way we can. Yeah, transporta I, I definitely agree with that. Um, do you think uh, bicycling in particular is a, uh, is a great form of transportation? Oh. It seems to be... You know, it's still basically the machine that was originally designed. It's not that much different um, from the, the creation of the bicycle. Right. It is just such an efficient way to move. Yes. And that you just get so much bang for the buck. And so, and the other thing is, is bikes don't have to be expensive to work. Uh, kids especially, used bikes are great. Um, you know, a bike, a good quality bike can have, you know, a, an eternity of lifetimes. Right. And uh, I, I agree with you on every point. <laughs> um, I'm singing to the choir. I know. It's, uh, it is, it's, I don't always get the opportunity to sort of talk to people who are as, as passionate about bicycles. Um, but uh, it's definitely when you meet them, you, uh, you know, you share a lot of the same sentiments um, as far as transportation. I'm a, um, I'm, so you're probably a transportation uh, uh, advocate as well, like that, public transportation. That, yeah, def I definitely. I mean, I consider myself a transportation rider. Mm -hmm. If it's in my community, if it's in Davis and I live in East Davis, wherever it is, I will use my bike as often as possible. On days I do need to use my car, I try to offset that by running several errands at one time. And mm -hmm. we can all do that. And in fact, it makes for, for a much friendlier, um, more comfortable uh, community. And yeah. that's, that's really important to the bike campaign is that it's not just about you get on your bike. It's about all of us and how we get all the things we need. We need food, we need to get kids to school, we need to get to doctor's appointments. Right. And I, the longer I've been riding my bike, uh, well, I've been riding it my entire life, but uh, I'm definitely not an anti-car person. And I, I think I, you mentioned that earlier, that you're in the same camp. You're not, uh, uh, you know, we're not, at, we're not really hardcore anti-car activists. It's more just about promoting a, a highly efficient way of transportation. Yeah. Um, and especially within the community, I would really like to see a switch. Right now we have about, in Davis, and we're very fortunate here, um, we have about 25% um, bike share. That means 75% of everybody out there in every trip in Davis, 75% of these people are getting in their car to do it. Mm -hmm. It might just be a half mile away to get milk. How much better would we all feel if we could change the car mode to 25% and walk to the grocery store. Right. We would really feel good. Well, and it's just the benefits you get from bicycling are uh, sort of exponential, right? I mean... Uh, well, even if you don't ride a bike, you're going to benefit from less carbon monoxide poisoning in the air. Yeah, and uh, not to mention parking and the oh. convenience of have a bicycle. And the cost of parking. 
the yeah. cost for our community as a whole. It costs an, a lot of money to provide a place to park a two to three ton vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've gone in po different portions of my life without a car and uh, being so used to using a bike and train and uh, this type of thing for transportation, uh, it's kind of nice knowing that uh, you can sort of operate independent of that whole system. Um, speaking of that system, you grew up in Davis, so you've seen changes in infrastructure, even oh. in Davis. Davis is known as everyone knows, is a bicycle capital, gold, gold, plat platinum. I don't even know. Platinum what the, rated. Platinum rated. Uh, rated. And uh, have you se you've seen the infrastructure in Davis and other cities sort of becoming more and more friendly to bicycles? Throughout the nation, everybody's talking about it. One, because cities can't afford to just keep paving streets and creating more parking spaces for cars. They just don't have the money for it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, whether it be New York City, and last week I met somebody from Concord here in the East Bay. It is so much easier to convert and make the street more accessible to people. And, and really, the chant we need to remember is that streets are for people. They're not sure. for cars. They're for people that need to get to different things in our communities. Well, and of course, if you look back in the history of paving uh, and at, uh, putting in roads, it was for the, uh, Le the League of American Wheelmen. Or That's the, exactly right. Uh, so bicyclists act or bicycling was actually <laughs> some of the driving force behind creating roads in the first place. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, of course, bicyclists uh, belong on the road and we are traffic, right? So there's no difference between... Uh, so uh, using that analogy, I think that it's only um, fitting that bicyclists are getting more and more infrastructure spent. Um, let's move on to some of what your uh, campaign is about. Uh, you started something called the Bike Campaign, Bicycling Campaign? The, the, bike, the campaign, bike Campaign. The Bike Campaign, and our mission is to greatly increase bike riding. We would like that to evolve in the streets, just being more comfortable yes. for families to get to schools, to parks, and to shopping. Just imagine that, what that would look like for you, everybody, people with small children, to feel comfortable to be in the street, to go shopping. We'd be waving at each other. It'd be Mayberry all over. Yeah, yeah. I think it does feel, uh, and it's, we don't have to just imagine it. We can see some pictures in Europe and different places where bicycling is just a part of everyday life. Right. I've been to Holland. Uh -huh. I, I have drunk the Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I, uh, you know, the first bike lanes that came to Davis, California, were installed because of a couple that went to visit mm -hmm. Holland and said, right. "Wow, we could do that too." And and we're seeing that happening across, rippling all the way across the United States. Yes, and. Um so, as part of your campaign, um, why or why did you why did you start it? I mean, why you personally just felt that you could uh, start this campaign, start this nonprofit in order to enact uh, change at the school level? Did mm. you see sort of that there was a lack of a lack of um, lack of training at that age, or like how or sort of a there's know, there's you... a lack of willingness most often on the part of the parents to kind of break from the herd and pay attention to their kids mm -hmm. and the messages that they're sending them and the kind of community that they're creating. I see. And as people make a decision as to how they're going to transport their kids to kindergarten, let's say, that may establish the transportation patterns for the next 12 years after kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And that if those kids are being driven, they're going to be continue to be driven, and then they're going to ask for a car, and then we've got to park that one too. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and that's starting, to, that's starting to now break down in that 50% um, of fewer 16-year-olds are getting driver's licenses. My daughter is a college graduate. She lives in San Francisco. She's 25 years old, almost 25 26 and has no driver's license mm -hmm. and this is no longer a stigma this is the new evolution of transportation it's for everybody not just one person taking up a lot of space did you find that uh, the culture surrounding um, bicycling at a young age is, was changing or very much so yeah. I think driving uh, has definitely become something that uh, implies status mm -hmm. see what I have therefore what I own and what my worth is and if you don't have that there must be something wrong with you there's a stigmatization that happened to uh, cycling within the last well my lifetime of riding a bike here in Davis so and you felt uh, you felt that it before that it was more accepted and definitely it was just what you did it mm -hmm. was the norm the street were to be safe enough for children to go to school. Come on, people. Right. You know, we can't say that we're, you know, we care about the environment and not care about getting our kids to school 
comfortably on bicycles or walking. Do you, what are the biggest hurdles you see then uh, in your work with the bike campaign as far as getting people on? You mentioned the stigma. Right. Uh, is, that, is that the biggest hurdle or is it sort of a fear of safety? Uh, um, or how? There's, there's a, I think the fear of safety is most often an excuse. I think mostly now we have a disconnected um, piece of population, whether they come from another country or they come from another county, mm -hmm. they did not grow up using a bicycle. So right. your experience and my experience was very different from theirs. So people aren't generally going to encourage their children to do something they don't need to do. So we do a lot of training of, um, of new cyclists. And I myself became certified as a League of American Bicyclists um, instructor. Okay. And people go, oh, I know how to ride a bike. But, you know, do you know how to ride a bike in an urban environment right. with your children? How do you move things on your bike? You know, when there's going to be a lot of inclement weather, how do you dress? You know, there's, there's a lot to know. It's a lifetime of learning. I agree. Uh, and I think sometimes probably that is taken for granted mm -hmm. as to, uh, yes, I know how to ride a bike. Uh, but how comfortable are you using it for transportation on an everyday basis? Right. We want people comfortable and confident, but mostly we want people to really have fun when we're, there, when we're doing this. And so being able to keep the bike repaired and maintained is really important because if you don't have support in that area, you could be having a real grind of a ride. It's not going to be fun. Right, and so out of that, out of the bike campaign effort, which uh, we'll go back to a little bit, uh, one of your programs is called the Bike Garage. The Bike Garage. And, and does that start specifically because you saw that people uh, need some education? Or? Well, and they needed bikes. So some people either didn't have bikes or they had a bike. You can find a bike in just about any garage in the United States. Mm -hmm. They had a bike, but it wasn't operative. The tires were flat, the chain was rusty. Maybe the bike didn't even fit, but they didn't know it. They just found it painful to ride it. Yeah. So there's a lot people don't know about bikes. So the Bike Garage accepts donations of bikes and we recycle them and we get them underneath people that want to learn and who really feel motivated to do something mm -hmm. to, to take action in their own community. So I noticed uh, the Bike Garage is located in Woodland. Yes. Um, and uh, the nonprofit sort of serves all of Yolo County. That's uh, correct. I'm wondering, uh, and we could put up a map of actually where the bike garage is located. Uh, this is a map of, in, in, of Woodland. You can see the bike garage is uh, off of Gibson there, or kind of off of? Off of Gibson and Coloma, and we're um, very close to Woodland Adult Education, which is a perfect location. Lots of people taking English as a second language courses. So they're new to the United States, and we want to give them mobility. So, and the idea, so tell me a little bit about locating in Woodland and then uh, what the, some choices that went into that. So, um, number one, just having a place to go. We were given a space to occupy in a middle school, and it was in front of that same middle school that I had the epiphany of, why are all these cars parked in front of this school, and why are overweight children coming out of those cars and... Most of those kids, 75% of them, were on the free breakfast and free lunch program. Mm -hmm. So I can't believe that kids aren't getting a subliminal message that perhaps their parents are struggling even to put gas in the car, but they don't have enough money left over to provide them with breakfast and lunch. Right. And that's not a message I think kids need to receive. So with the bike garage there, what, uh, what benefits do you see uh, for them? We repair a lot of bikes. We do a lot of teaching. I mean, we see kids every day that nobody's ever thought to put a helmet on them mm -hmm. or to give them any riding instructions as to what side of the street do you ride on, hand signals, lights, um, high visibility clothing, rain gear. Yeah. They just threw them out there in the middle of the street on a bike, and, and we need to do better than that. It really needs to start at before kindergarten. Sure. Um, have you found a lot of support for these efforts that you've... Uh, and Tremendously. Are... Mind-blowing support. So Woodland was a community where I was told that the only person um, riding a bike was somebody with a DUI. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Woodland has come together, the, the mayors that I've worked with, the city council, the city um, staff leaders like the city manager and economic development, and they are creating a community that's bike friendly and have already received the bronze designation from the League of American Bicyclists as a bicycle friendly community. And they're committed. They want to go for the gold. That's fantastic. And uh, being that you're from Davis, uh, do they see you as an outsider or sort of part oh, of the community? Or Woodland people are so nice. They adopted me. Great. I feel like I'm truly part of the family. That's awesome. Um, and, you know, we're almost out of time. So 
Uh, I knew it was a short interview, so uh, if people want more information, where can they go to learn about the bike campaign? Our website is chock full oh, of information, she, she put it up and there. we are thebikecampaign.com, very easy. And if you want to reach out and call me, our number is on the website, or you can call me here in Davis. It's a Davis number, 753-1125. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, we've been talking to Maria Contreras-Tabot, and I uh, really appreciate you coming in. Uh, that your efforts Thanks, are, yeah, um, we'll be following closely as to how uh, how uh, your efforts will, I'm sure, be expanding and some of the support you're getting. So hopefully we'll have you back in some other day. Thank you so much. All right, you've been watching In the Studio, and today my name is Jeff Shaw, and stay tuned for the next episode.